If you've ever seen literally any of my videos, then you know that choosing a niche is the number one thing that I recommend to all aspiring freelance copywriters. Choosing your niche. Choose your niche. Why you need a freelance writing niche. So the very first thing you're gonna do is choose a niche. And I have several videos on how to choose a freelance writing niche and the best freelance writing niches for beginners. And yet, I know my students and subscribers are still struggling with this. This is the number one question I get from aspiring freelancers on all of my platforms. So why is it so hard to choose a niche? And what can you do about it? And how can you choose a niche once and for all? I feel like there should be like an eagle sound. Well, keep watching, buddy, because today we're gonna get into why it's so hard to choose a freelance copywriting niche. By the way, if you're new here, hi, I'm Colleen Welsh. I am a coach for freelance copywriters. Why do I know about this stuff? Because I am a freelance copywriter with over five years of experience. I work in the beauty industry and some of my clients have included Olay, Marc Jacobs, Milani, Gucci Beauty, etc. I know what I'm talking about. I make full-time money on part-time hours as a freelancer and I am here to share my wisdom with other people because freelancing, in my opinion, saved my life and I just wanna help other people. First reason why it's so hard to choose a freelance writing niche is because we contain multitudes. Look, nobody is just one thing. I think that there is like this idea in our culture that once you pick a job, that job defines you and that is the only thing that you do. You're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a bartender, you're an actor, and that's it. That's the only thing you do. But how many people do you know are actually like that? They only do one thing. There's not that many people who are like that. Or maybe people do just do one thing, but it's definitely not the only thing that they're interested in and it's probably not the only thing they wish they were doing. Everyone is complicated, has a lot of interests, wish they could do a lot of hobbies. We are all limited by time, money, and our obligations that we have. We are constantly learning and discovering new things about ourselves, discovering new interests we never knew that we had. That is normal. There's so many people that come to me and they're like, I can't choose a niche because I have so many interests. We all do, okay? You can still choose a niche. Like that doesn't preclude you from being able to have a niche or being being able to freelance. Your niche does not define you. This is not the only thing you're gonna be doing. In fact, the great thing about freelancing is you can actually make more per hour as a freelancer than you would in a traditional work environment. So if you have a lot of interests or hobbies that you would like to pursue, you may actually have more time to pursue them as a freelancer. I'm a great example of this. Like before I started freelancing, I literally like just went to work and then like went to happy hours and then came home and watched TV. But now that I've been freelancing for five years, I do so much stuff like outside of my freelancing job. Freelancing does not define me, despite the fact that I have a whole business called the Freelance Writer's Guide. I produce music, I release music, I write music, I act, I direct like comedy shorts, I do sketch comedy, I do improv, I read books, I listen to podcasts, I have a house that I like to decorate. I have a lot of stuff in my life. I am not defined by my freelance writing niche, which by the way is beauty and that's it. Okay, I do listen to a couple beauty podcast because you know it's good to know stuff if you have a lot of interest you are not alone in that that does not mean you cannot be a freelancer okay on to my next point so another reason why it might be so hard for you to choose a freelance writing niche is because you just don't know what options are out there so a niche is a money-making industry and if you're not really like in tune with the business world or business news you might not know what industries are out there i had no idea what industries were out there when I graduated from high school and was like trying to decide what track I wanted to go into in college, or even when I graduated from college, I didn't know what was out there. It was only through having work experience and starting to like talk to other people about their jobs and the industries that they worked in that I got a better feeling for what industries are out there. That's one tip. I have for you is just talk to people. They don't necessarily need to be freelancers or work in marketing. Just talk to anybody. Where do they work? What is that industry like? What does that entail? What is their day to day like? It's actually really interesting. Our economy is so complicated and there are so many jobs and industries that you like would have literally no idea exists. Wait, I need to like shut this blind because it's like 
there's like, it's too hot over here. But yeah, talk to people, like go to networking events and just find out what people do for their job. Additionally, do your research. I have a few videos on freelance writing niche ideas, one here, and here, but besides the ones I have, there's lots of other videos on YouTube about freelance writing niche ideas. I will say this, a lot of people say something is a freelance writing niche, but it's actually a service. So the niche is the industry you work in and the service is the type of work that you do in that industry. Sometimes people will say like white papers are a niche, but they're actually that's actually a service. If you have a very specialized service, you don't necessarily need to have one niche that you work in. But that's another subject for another time. If you are like most beginning freelance copywriters, you probably want to write blog posts or web copy or something like that. And that is something that kind of does require you to have a niche. So do some research. Don't spend six months doing this, but like definitely do some research and find out what niches and industries are out there, who needs help with their marketing, that will give you a better idea of the direction that you need to move in next. Reason three why it's so hard to choose a niche is because we fear commitment. This goes back to societal programming. You know, in my grandparents' generation, people just like got a job and then they just like worked there until they retired and that was it. Keep in mind, my grandparents went through like the Great Depression and World War II and stuff. So I think that they were like thrilled to just have some security and they were good with that. For people in my generation, I'm a millennial, the generation below me, Gen Z, I think that we fear commitment and why shouldn't we? There's so many options available to us. Uh, there's so many lives we could live. So why should we choose one and just stick to it? Sometimes you have to make a commitment to get any kind of momentum going. You have to. You couldn't get married if you didn't like just pick a person to date for like a month. Do you know what I mean? If you have a certain goal that requires commitment, you're just gonna have to commit. At the same time, you do not, you're not getting married, okay? Like you're just picking a niche, you're gonna make a portfolio, you're gonna put yourself out there and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, you can just choose a different niche. And once you've already made a portfolio and come up with a client strategy and started doing outreach, you already know how to do that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just go back, choose a different niche and do it again. It's not the end of the world. You haven't failed. You only fail when you give up. So just don't give up and you won't fail. Like many good things in life, you are going to have to make a commitment in order to get the momentum you need to build this business and start making money. The fourth and final reason why it's so hard to choose a niche, and I suspect that this is actually at the root of all these other reasons, is procrastination. Uh, we're just putting it off. We don't wanna move forward, um, we're afraid. We're afraid to move forward with our freelancing journey. So we're just gonna get stuck on purpose, at least, subconsciously at the very first step and just be like, oh, well, I can't decide, I can't choose something, I can't commit, so I'm just not gonna do this at all. When the real truth is that you're just afraid to get started, you're afraid of rejection, you're afraid it won't work out, you're afraid that it will work out and you're gonna have to change your whole lifestyle and people are gonna like say stuff to you about it. Like people will be like, oh, you're freelancing now. Or you know, like if you have freelancing tied to a different goal, like I did when I started, like my goal was to become a freelancer so that I could travel full time and be a digital nomad. So you might be afraid that it's actually gonna work out and then you're gonna have to go do that other thing that is tied to freelancing for you. You're gonna have to leave your apartment and move to Europe. Sometimes things that we want are scary, and but we just have to be brave and go do them anyways. And remember like being brave doesn't mean you're not scared. It means you're just gonna do it anyways. And the best things in life are on the other side of that fear. So quit procrastinating. Stop procrastinating. Let's get into what to do next. Okay, so if you're stuck in this not being able to choose a niche stage, here's what I want you to do. Number one is do some research. Do up to 10 hours of research, yes but I want you to time it because doing beyond 10 hours of research, and that's like watching YouTube videos, going to networking events, 
reading business news or reading like business books, listening to podcasts, that's fine. Any of that counts. Like that's all great stuff. But I want you to limit yourself to how long you're gonna do this. 10 hours is good. You should have a pretty good idea after 10 hours what you wanna do or at least what's available to you. Like I said, I have several videos with lots of freelance writing niche ideas and I will link those below. How can you keep track of your time? I recommend using a time tracking software like Toggle, that's T-O-G-G-L dot com. It's free. And if you're going to become a freelancer, you really need to start tracking your time anyway. So you might as well track it on the very first stage of building your freelancing business. And it's so satisfying to like look back over the years and be like, oh, I spent this much in August 2017 on freelancing. And hopefully you'll just see that number go down and down and down while you see your bank account go up and up and up. But anyways, while you're doing your research, just make a list of freelance writing niche ideas that resonate with you. You don't have to get super into like, what clients am I gonna do or how's it gonna work or do I know about this or what? Just make a list of things that sound interesting and that you feel like you could do. Okay, then you're gonna narrow those choices down to two, all right? Just narrow it down to two. I don't care how you do it, just cross them out. You could go with your gut. You could make a spreadsheet of earning potential. You could interview people that work in these niches. And then, and this is key, I want you to just randomly pick one. And if you feel really disappointed by the niche that Chance has chosen for you, then you'll know that you actually wanted the other one and you can just do that one instead. Bam! And then just make your portfolio and get out there. Like don't waste a bunch of time in this initial phase. You need to focus on putting yourself out there so that you can start making money because money is what makes a business, not research. And remember, if it doesn't work out, you can just do something else. It's fine. Like it's okay if it doesn't work out. It's really not that big of a deal, especially if you're a young person who's got plenty of time ahead of them. Like, don't worry about it. And if you follow all those steps and you still need help choosing your niche, then apply to my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. In our very first coaching call, I will help you choose a niche that you feel confident about. We'll also plan a strategy for creating your portfolio. We will work together to come up with a solid strategy for finding clients in your niche that are actually gonna pay you what you're worth. And I'll help you find out what you're worth. Also, I mean like for your, you know, copywriting, not like you're worth as a human, which is another subject for another time. So anyways, I'll link the application form for that program below. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them as comments below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this video, I guess give it a thumbs down. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want more videos like this because I try to make them every week. Do I succeed in that? No, but I do my best and you only fail when you give up. Okay, buddy, that's all for me today. Check you later. Watch for deer. Okay, bye.